that you asked, sir, for metastatic lesions, say if it is a lung mat, it is very close to critical structures and you cannot get an R0 by a surgical exposure. They can be RFA'd, even 3 to 5 centimeters of lung mats have been RFA'd, liver mats have been RFA'd. Like in bone, you asked, sir, about the diameter. Chondroblastomas up to 3.5 cm have been RFA'd and they have not got a recurrence. Uh, the, like he explained, certain key structures have to be protected. The physis has to be protected. So you give a saline wash to decrease the temperature around the areas that you don't want to get heated and injured. Uh, with osteodostoma, sir, like you said, changing from a surgery to an RFA, I would say 99% of the times an RFA would give a proper or a good result like a surgery without you know, any big incision or morbidity of the surgery. So that is how we are shifting from invasive to minimal invasive for certain benign tumors. So do you have to move the needle when the lesion is large or a single go will ablate the whole three So the multi-pronged RFA probe is the one that we use, which can cover a huge area even from the center. If you are, do not have that, then you can target it by two, you know, ways. Uh, good afternoon and I thank you for you know calling me for this uh, talk of biopsy. Uh, uh, it has been labeled touching lava. This is because when we come across a pathology or a tumor, it is always, you know, we always give a second thought whether we should go in and do something for it or directly send the patient to a center which does it regularly. But I believe that a biopsy is something that we can do in our OPD practice and then with a diagnosis, send the patient somewhere where the patient can be managed nicely because it may not really be a tumor that you cannot manage. It may not even be a tumor. So that is why I would say why biopsy? Any pathology or any lesion that you see in the bone, you need to know whether it is really a tumor or it is just an infection. Whether that tumor is either benign or malignant. So that, that makes biopsy very important. Now we have questions like who should do the biopsy, when should the biopsy be done, what should be the correct site, open or closed, which area to target and when do you ask for image guided biopsy. So to answer that question who should do the biopsy, it should be performed by or under the supervision of the surgeon who will be doing the final surgery. Now why so? Because with the x-rays and the MRIs that has been done before, you do not do a biopsy unless the radiological investigations are over. The surgeon or the uh, musculoskeletal oncologist has a fair idea of what he is going to deal with. A lytic lesion with a narrow zone of transition, good margins, he knows he is dealing with something benign. The biopsy may not really change the course of a limb salvage surgery. The extent of the disease, sometimes on the MRI you see a disease somewhere, on the X-ray you see a disease somewhere else. And to know the representative area which you need to biopsy, you need you, you plan in your mind and the final operative plan. Now sometimes you have an x-ray which shows that the lesion is probably metastatic because you have the age on the wrong side of 50. You have a chest x-ray because it shows lung mets. Now this time your biopsy is not going to matter because you are just proving it is a metastatic disease and probably subject the patient to best supportive or palliative care and not even operate on that patient. But sometimes when you have to plan a surgery, your biopsy if gone wrong, in terms of where you have done it, which site you have put in, it can make your limb salvage surgery into an amputation. So prerequisites, like I said, imaging, without imaging we do not proceed for a biopsy. Imaging is X-ray and MRI. CT scan as such has no significant role in musculoskeletal tumors to plan a biopsy or even plan a surgery unless it is, you are dealing with a chondrosarcoma and you want to know what is the sclerotic margin of the lesion. So you see here why MRI is important. We do not do MRI of a particular joint. We do it of the complete bone. There are skip mats that you may miss if you just ask for an MRI knee. You get an X-ray. X-ray shows lesion in the knee and around the knee you get MRI knee. You plan everything and then you find out there are skip lesions in the diaphysis you have missed and you lost the battle there. Now biopsy. When you come to a biopsy, core needle biopsy is what we you know propagate. Uh, this is something which has come up over a due course of time and at present we have almost 99% accuracy with a well-planned core needle biopsy. Uh, on this flowchart you see true cut biopsy for a soft tissue lesion and a genital biopsy for a bony lesion. The first thing there was an FNAC. FNAC I feel today is something which is not important in a bone 
because the role of FNAC as per literature, if you see for primary diagnosis, the role of FNAC is no. For bony lesions, no. It is only useful when you are contemplating a recurrence and you just want to prove that yes, it has recurred, you can do an FNAC, see malignant cells and then go back to your restaging and plan your treatment accordingly. For soft tissue tumors, yes, FNAC has been a choice that the general surgeons have been doing since ages, but it cannot give you immunochemistry, which cannot tell you what are the molecular structures in the tissue. It can just tell you it is a spindle cell neoplasm, but it cannot tell you which neoplasm, whether it is a liposarcoma or a fibrosarcoma, and treatment does change depending on what type of sarcoma it turns out to be. So there is no role of FNAC in musculoskeletal oncology. Open biopsy versus closed biopsy. We have been taught, textbook says, open biopsy, remove as much as you can, you get more tissue, you get a better answer. But yes, more tissue can be obtained, less chances of getting a negative biopsy, but the disadvantages are that you have a larger incision, high risk of contamination, you need anesthesia, you maybe need to do it in OT, and the cost also goes up. Risk of a pathological fracture when you drill or use an osteotome or maybe you know to break the bone to get some tissue. A closed biopsy has advantages over it. It is minimally invasive. It can be done in OPD. You may require CM guidance if at all. Uh, it is less contamination. Local anesthesia is good enough and it is economical. The con says less, I mean, chances of negative result. Now, this all depends on your planning. If you have not planned it well, you enter into a place where there is no disease or no pathological tissue may not get a result. In very small lesions, there are chances that you have a negative biopsy, but you can always repeat a needle biopsy again. So these are photographs that you see people have done open biopsies, sinovectomies and then it comes out to be a tumor. When you do the final definitive surgery, so much skin has to be excised. This may not close primarily and you may need a flap for closure. Flap has its own problems, microvascular flaps can get congested and it has to be reoperated. Local flaps can have edge necrosis, your post-operative radiotherapy can be affected, your chemotherapy has to be stopped until the infection settles. If you see a closed needle biopsy, you can see how the incision is marked, an elliptical you know, incision around the biopsy scar and at the end you see such a small piece of skin is left over the tissue and this easily closes. Things to avoid. Now you do not enter into intracompartmental planes. This is what we have been doing for trauma with if probably if you see a proximal humerus lesion, what you would want to do is go through the deltopectoral approach but that is wrong because the tissues that are through the path from the skin to the lesion have to be excised in the surgery. If you are going to two planes, you have to excise two planes, which will become very morbid. Major neurovascular structures have to be avoided. People say the shortest route is the best route for biopsy, but that doesn't mean you go through the posterior approach in the knee and you know contaminate the neurovascular structures, which again makes your surgery difficult and maybe an amputation is contemplated. Do not enter through a normal compartment. You have a lytic lesion, probably in the proximal tibia. You want to go through the, you know, typical plating approach, a medial approach, but your lesion is more lateral. You are going through normal medial bone to approach the lateral lesion and you are ending up contaminating that area which may require a bigger surgery. And avoid heavily calcified or ossified and necrotic areas. Now this is because a calcified or ossified area may be difficult to penetrate in your OPD setting under a local anesthesia. Necrotic areas because these are non-representative. You do not get any representative tissue when you enter a necrotic area. So again, like people feel you hit the center of the disease and you will get a representative tissue that is wrong. Tumors grow peripherally. So yet their peripheries are more representative than their centers. See this, this is what I was mentioning about the proximal humerus. Now, indications of an open biopsy. If you have more than three negative needle biopsies, and your image guided biopsy is also failed, you can then go for an open biopsy. One or two negative biopsies doesn't mean you have to go in and open the patient. If an open biopsy is performed, if at all, what should you avoid? Transverse incisions. You see, transverse incisions make your scar excisions bigger, lead to plastic surgery or maybe difficult closures. Major soft tissue and neurovascular structures, by that soft tissue I mean rectus. If you have to biopsy a femur, do not go anteriorly because if a rectus has to be excised, you will not have any knee function even after a successful limb salvage surgery. You will have very good looking x-ray with an endoprosthesis, but the patient will not be able to have any knee movements. 
biopsying through the joint do not contaminate the joint because then you have to do an extra articular resection which makes reconstruction very difficult the drain side if you see the incision there you can see the suture marks there your drain has to be in line of the incision because if at all this recurs this drain side has to be excised if it is away maybe at the side or too far away in the line of incision again your scar becomes a big one now do not raise flaps you know when you go for an open biopsy maybe a 2 cm incision just directly hit the tissue and take out the material do not raise flaps use retractors because this is where the <coughs> seeding happens and the contamination happens achieve perfect hemostasis if you have opened it keep 5 to 6 cm of pressure over it the hematoma also causes contamination and avoid a pathological fracture now this is an excellent paper you know in the radiology journals which helps us to know from where to enter a particular bone for a biopsy the green tracks are the track which are necessary to go through to get a biopsy so if you see the first femur proximal femur if your lesion is in the head do not go anteriorly go through like as if you are doing a dhs because if you go anteriorly your incision has to become anterior and you may have to end up excising the proximal femur rather than you know saving it and ending up with the curate as if it's a giant cell tumor similarly for shafts for proximal tb and distal femur we always go through the medial approach because dissection is easier to go to the neurovascular structures in the proximal humerus it is the anterior approach through the anterior deltoid and then certain image guided is required when smaller lesions inaccessible lesions are there now this is our armamentarium for a j needle biopsy you can see the jamshedi needle there with its trocar and uh, you have a 11 number stab knife local anesthesia sorry <clears throat> uh, this is a short video of how we do a biopsy in uh, you no know, under local anesthesia a lytic lesion on the x-ray if you see here you will see the x-ray now this is a 35 year old male lytic lesion most likely it's a giant cell tumor you can you do with an mri you confirm you plan where your biopsy is going to be medial or lateral according to the disease you can see only one of the condyle is involved you mark it on the patient you can see here you are planning a lateral approach between the patellar and the fibula now i would just pause the video here you saw there was a saline with heparin that i mentioned i'll talk about it later you prepare scrub you in give local anesthesia you put a stab incision you put your j needle in one motion clockwise or anti clockwise you get a give way when you go and you know hit the lesion now because it was lytic lesion a lot of blood in the cavity maybe a giant cell tumor with secondary aneurysmal bone cyst changes this up in your in and out movement of the needle causes the tissue to come out and you get enough tissue by just one small incision and one needle inside now this is one for solid lesions now this most likely is an osteosarcoma i don't have the imaging for that you see this is the incision that is planned in this case you might have to go two or three times through the same incision through the same in a hole you make in the bone but then change directions to get tissues from different directions to get representative to tissues usually we advise five to six cores because you might have some necrotic cores some normal bone but you will not have a negative biopsy if taken six cores from probably all directions with the same hole do not make multiple entries into the bone now this is what i call 5 to 6 cores of 1 cm each put it in 10% formalin and send it to your pathologist about the heparin that was mentioned in the video we use a saline heparin mixture because when you flush the needle with that heparinized saline you do not get clots in the needle sometimes when you are putting the needle inside going clockwise penetrating the bone you may get a blood clot there and your tissue remains behind and you just get blood in the biopsy now when you send it to the pathologist it all depends whom do you send to uh, bone or musculoskeletal pathology is also very rare not many pathologists are very confident reporting sarcomas or bone tumors so you have to send it to a center or a pathologist who is experienced in musculoskeletal pathology and one more thing that i specify most of the times is never divide your tissue you do not know what tissue is going to which pathologist you might have six cores three may be necrotic three may be representative you send necrotic notes to tata hospital and they say known malignancy you three you send three to a local pathologist says sarcoma you will trust tata hospital and you say local pathologist is just saying because there is a lesion on the x ray and mri and he just correlated but that is not wrong we get a bias we get prejudiced because we have sent 
or divided sample. Send everything to one person. Get a slide block review done with whom, whomever you want, and then you can take a call. What is the final diagnosis? Soft tissue lesions. We see soft tissue tumors, uh, maybe benign also, malignant also. The rules remain the same. Imaging before biopsy. MRI is the standard of choice. Then you do a core biopsy. Core biopsy is with a gun. Whether it is a coaxial or a simple core biopsy, it depends on what you are comfortable with it. Again, local anesthesia, stab incision, put the needle, take five to six cores from different directions, and that's it. Sarcomas are heterogeneous. Most likely soft tissue sarcomas, bony sarcomas are still easy to get a positive biopsy. But in soft tissue sarcomas, you do get negative biopsies most of the time. And then you end up doing an open or excisional biopsy, which is wrong. And that is why we go into multiple directions to get at least some representative tissue that is high grade or actually representing the final tumor. Again, excision specimens after the final surgery, after your biopsy may change because of this reason they are heterogeneous. But that doesn't change your surgery or the management of the patient. Now, when to do an excision biopsy? Only when the tumor is less than 3 centimeters superficial to the fascia and not having infiltrative margins. You can see here in the representative, the T is the tumor. This is a superficial fascia. It is just between the skin and superficial fascia. You can do an excision biopsy. Here, even if your margins are not enough, you end up getting a high-grade tumor. Revising is easy and not going to cause a lot of skin loss or maybe disease contamination into deeper tissues. Which part of the lesion to biopsy? Like I said, representative tissue. The center is always necrotic. You want to take it from a representative area. And this is the diagrammatic representation for that. So with your history that you've already taken, with your imaging that you already have, this biopsy will give you histology which will complete your diagnosis. If I have time, I can just show a couple of things. So this is a four-year-old boy, came with pain and swelling in the right leg. You can see the x-ray here. Uh, most likely when you see this x-ray in a young child, you will contemplate an infection. This is what was thought. Two interventions were done, probably curettage, sent it for culture, maybe did not send. Eventually, the patient was increasing in swelling, got MRI done, got a proper biopsy and diagnosed Ewing sarcoma. This is what it was when the patient got diagnosed. Another case, a two-year-old girl with pain in the forearm. This is the January X-ray, the February X-ray. The MRI showing a lesion there, a biopsy was then done because the radiologist always gives you a report which is either not confirmatory or he says clinically correlated. And he gives his impression that could be this, less likely this. And the description of the MRI is more important than the impression which we miss. And when you have this, you do biopsy, you get, it was infection, chronic osteomyelitis, you get a culture and the patient is treated and the patient is absolutely fine. Now these are unplanned excisions, open biopsies or excisional biopsies which scars have gone wrong, recurrences come and you will require a huge microvascular flap for this in the final surgery. These are again incisions where the drain is too far away, where the incision should have been the purple line. They have taken incision posteriorly and the patient will now probably require hip disarticulation or external hemipelvectomy. So avoid these things. Now this is just again, you know, stressing on what we always say, examination, radiographs, MRI and then biopsy. The take home message is that biopsy is a must before any intervention. A needle biopsy gives 99% accurate reports to be done by the surgeon who would do the final surgery or in you know coordination with that surgeon. Do not divide the specimen sent to different pathologists. Culture what you biopsy and biopsy what you culture. This is commonest because Ewing sarcoma even for the pathologist can sometimes be confusing and after a long time when it just progresses you then come to know what it is. Infection and evings look similar on MRI as well. And importance of a multidisciplinary team, that is you talk to your radiologist, talk to your pathologist. Sometimes your biopsy result that the pathologist gives is not what you are thinking it could be. Your radiologist says it is a giant cell tumor, your pathologist says it is an osteosarcoma. You sit down, you think what could be the possibilities, age of the patient, history of presentation. Telangiectetic osteosarcomas do look radiologically like a giant cell tumor. So your pathologist is actually your final word. The radiologist has to agree with the pathologist after the clinician has explained what it could be. And histopathology is the gold standard before proceeding in any treatment in musculoskeletal tumors. Thank you.